Proctor and Bergman in 1975 came up to the station when exactly at the time when Born to Run was huge. And I was playing Born to Run, and we'd worked out, we'd worked out the bit ahead of time that they would take the tone arm and actually take it off the turntable in the middle of the song and start discussing the drum solo on air. <laughs> So listeners, it, it was the, their humor sometimes was a little too hip for the room, so they were like, they just pissed people off. We did that throughout the entire Born to Run, so, and I mean, people were just calling up, the phones were going crazy. Who cares? Exactly. Yeah. What is reality? Yes. Yeah. Proctor and Bergman, and uh, God bless Peter Bergman, he just passed away last year, he uh, he's amazing. Uh, George Harrison was an amazing interview, I interviewed George when he was here for 33 and a third which was his, uh, just a brilliant album, and they did a thing downtown, and I was wearing a yoga button on my, a tantric yoga button on my lapel, and George walks over to me, and we start talking, he just, he was sick of all the press, and he saw this yoga button, and that's what sort of made that happen, and he said, uh, I'm getting a cup of tea, can I get you a cup of tea? And I almost fucking cried, I mean, it was like, <laughs> George Harrison wanted to get me a cup of tea. So that was, yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I was like, yes. Uh, those, those were the good ones. Um, the the worst tea. one. Huh? Chamomile tea, I'm sure. Uh, no, 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 I think it was English <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> David Clayton Thomas, Blood, Sweat, and Tears, disaster. Really? Disaster interview. Jake brought Blood, Sweat, and Tears to uh, D.C. Where did they play? Do you remember where that concert was? Was it? No, it wasn't the Bayou. No, 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 no. It was... Uh, uh, I don't know, it was, no, it was like the uh, sports arena or something downtown. And it might have been. Uh, but David Clayton Thomas was just, it just wasn't happening. The magic wasn't there. He, uh, he just didn't want to talk. He didn't want to talk to me. And, you know, and I said, I'm good with that. And I left. And so that ne it never really happened. And the other one that was really, really weird was uh, the soft machine. Does anybody remember oh, the, yeah, the yeah, soft machine? Yeah. Soft Machine was a big deal. Jimi Hendrix had something to do with them they, at they, some point. They, they toured. The, they, they opened right here in town. Yes, exactly. And we had them up to HFS. That's what, and Hopper was still with the group, right? Yeah, I, th I believe so. He may have been the prime offender. But we were sitting in the studio, and the HFS studio was about That's as big Hopper, as this Hopper. stage. Yeah. The drummer. Who was the drummer? Don't remember. Was it? Yeah. Robert Wyatt. Wyatt, yes, Wyatt. Great singer, great soulful singer. Didn't last but to the second album, maybe? Yes. And they chain smoked the entire band in this tiny little room in the studio because in those days we could smoke if you smoke them if you got them. But in the HFS studio, the ventilation wasn't state of the art. It wasn't exactly state of the art. And I mean, I was asphyxiated and I, and I couldn't. And a couple of interviews that were, that were not good or not bad, but just really weird. Tim Buckley was one, and I think he was just really nervous. He was extremely nervous to, to talk about himself. I saw him at the whiskey. He was great. Yeah, I'm a great performer, but in, in an interview in a situation where in with one of us in the studio, very nervous, very, very uh, uptight. And Phil, same thing with Phil Oaks. We had Phil Oaks into the studio when he was here doing a counter inaugural ball. And I think he was drunk. And he just, the magic wasn't there for radio. They were you know, both was one very of shy guys. They, they, they both really did, never wanted to do interviews. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, they, they, pr they proved it. <laughs> At 102.3. And the other one, and I know you remember this, we had Kiss come by the radio station. <laughs> the very first gig they did at the Bayou when they were like a brand new band. And I was like so blasé and I, I just, I couldn't give a shit because I didn't take them seriously because we're playing Tom Waits and Bonnie Raitt and we're playing blues that... Damien turned me on to that I'd never heard before, just great blues. And then there's this band Kiss. We didn't even tape it. We didn't even tape the interview because it was like, no, no, no. We're HFS, you Kiss, please. So I'm sorry that that didn't get taped because that were, it, it was a good interview. Were, were they breathing fire or anything like they, that? They weren't even in costume. They were just, you know, you know, and they were, they were nice guys and it was a good interview. They were a brand new band. I remember the one interview that had the biggest gaps in it was... One that Josh did with Donald Fagan. Really? There, there wasn't. <laughs> Tell us about that. Come on, Josh. Uh, I don't even. Uh, I'm not sure which Nothing one. Nothing was said. You, you would ask a question, and he'd go, uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> well, who, was, who was that uh, Canadian gal that 
uh, it had some hits. Um, uh, pop, pop. Yeah. Tony Mitch. No, not no. A pop singer. Um, Anne Murray. Yeah, Ann Murray. Oh. Ann Murray was there at the same time that Fagan was there. Oh, God. <laughs> and he was pissed. Did they, did they get together? And maybe talk they about did music not, or... they, did, they didn't enjoy one another's, each other's company. I've got a new one called Snowbird. You can all love it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a matter of uh, some bad scheduling that uh, people well, have done. But Fagan didn't talk. I mean, no. back then he just didn't talk. I, I couldn't believe that you were proposing to do an interview with him. So I, 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 had, I had an interview like that with, with Leon Redbone. Oh, yeah. and, I did that and, too, and same I said, thing. Well, I said, he, he said he'd driven across the country. I said, well, did you, what did you do along the way? And I was trying to get him to talk. He was pretty monosyllabic. And uh, I said, what, did you stop and visit friends? He said, friends? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any friends. <laughs> I had the same problem. I interviewed him once. He, he's, Leon Redbone is a character, yeah. right? Yeah. And... It, you know, he, he doesn't break the character. And the whole concept of that is he doesn't say anything. He just does the song. So if you ask him, like, real questions, like, where'd you come from? Where'd you start? He just sort of goes, eh, eh, eh. And speaking of surf, the, the one I always remember is one that you did. You did Mike Love of the Beach Boys. And I was, doing, oh, man. I was doing the overnight show then. I was coming in at 1 o'clock in the morning. And I had this ritual. Every, you know, when I come in on the air, quarter to one, I would bolt to the little tavern... Because back in the 70s, there were no Starbucks. You know, we didn't have a Mr. Coffee in the studio. The only place you could get coffee was at the carryout window of the little tavern. Or the psychedelic earlier. Well, they were, clo they were closing by then. So a quarter of the water, every night I'd bolt to the little tavern, get the biggest coffee I could get. So I come, come running in the studio, quarter to one, and you're interviewing my club of the Beach Boys. And you're talking about TM, you're talking about yoga and all that stuff. I show up with this cup of coffee. And all of a sudden, Mike Love starts reaming me. And, you know, he's not kidding. This is not jocular and funny. You know, he's not being, you know, he's not being kind of tongue-in-cheek. He's really, you shouldn't drink coffee, you little twerp, you know. He's going on and on about, you know, coffee, it's a stimulant, you know. You need to practice TM. And I was kind of cowering, cowering. What is this? Here, you know, I gotta stay up for the next eight hours. You know, this guy's telling me not to drink coffee. And he never played a Beach Boys song again. <laughs> well, to this to this day, I, you know, I have a thing about the Beach Boys.